Let's move along now. Tourism Minister Mamuloko Kubayo Ngubane has confirmed that all tourist attractions in the country are now permitted to operate under level two of the lockdown. Now, this includes all theme parks and entertainment centres. All attraction sites are required to adhere to social distancing and other safety protocols. Bars and restaurants also need to comply with the 10 p.m. curfew. Nightclubs are, however, not allowed to operate under the current regulations. The Tourism Minister, Mamuloko Gubane, joins me now live. A very good evening to you, Minister. Thanks indeed for your time. So, Minister, before we talk about uh, the resumption of uh, business in the tourism sector, this definitely happens uh, in the backdrop of devastation for the sector. Some back to survive retrenchments and staff reductions. What is the full extent of the impact? Good evening, Chris Alden, to your um, viewers. Definitely, um, I mean, if we look at the tourism activities that came to a standstill in March, as we announced um, lockdown and then moved into level five and level four, we didn't have much of the activities. So the, the devastating impact has meant that more in terms of um, your businesses, quite a lot in, t in the restaurant area had to close. Um, and some, we do know that they will not be able to come back even as we open. Um, we do note that some businesses in terms of your BNBs, um, in terms of hotels as well, having to retrench and lay off staff until they can have enough numbers where their operating costs are able to even uh, be lower than their profits. They are not able to. So we've got a lot of jobs that have been lost. But our hope now is that as we come to live now, and also going forward with hopefully as the international borders will be opened later, as government does its work, we will be believing that we'll see quite a number of recovery in the tourism. The projections show us that we'll be able to for even surpass where we were before the pandemic. Minister, uh, there's going to be a lot of reliance uh, on travel and uh, tourism from locals at this uh, given time. Given that international travel into South Africa is still banned, how does the market uh, tailor itself to be more affordable? I mean, you have some locals would possibly say it's quite expensive uh, to travel here at home. It's two ways. One is that you find not only about pricing, but you do find that Travelers, South African travelers, do not know much about their own country in terms of what it's got to offer. So part of that is to be able to expose South Africans to the choices that they've got uh, and the opportunities and the attractions that they can be able to find because we are very diverse in terms of the attractions and what we've got to offer. Yes, there are products in the country that by their nature, the owners have designed the products to be suitable for international markets. And many now we've been engaging with them. Many initially were reluctant to really reposition their products to respond to the domestic market. But many have started to look at it as an opportunity. And we say this because it's possible when we looked at our statistics, 2018, we had about 2.6 South African million South Africans moving across the country. Yeah. But we were able around based on campaigns, alerting South Africans, marketing, and just selling the product South Africa and 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 its diversification and diversity in terms of the attractions. We were able to push the number to 7.1 mm. in 2019. So we do believe that the domestic market has potential, is able to offer much what we can be able to get. Yeah. And if you look globally as well, other countries, their, their tourism, the pillar and the cornerstone of their tourism is their domestic market. Yeah. Yes, we might not be like, for example, in China, you might not have the numbers of people that they have, mm. but we do have enough people I mean, if you have out of 50, um, more than 50 million um, of population, but you have about 7.1 that are moving and you can have a quite bigger category. So if we can push the domestic market to at least surpass 10 million of South Africans enjoying their country, I do believe that even those who are product owners will redefine and redesign their products to suit the domestic market. Minister, we're not yet out of the woods uh, in terms of uh, COVID-19. On the issue of compliance uh, to safety protocols, uh, how does your department plan to ensure this? 
One is that um, we have been in engagement with the private sector, our sector, to make sure that all of us understand the importance of adhering to the tourism, to the safety um, measures, the protocols. But as a long term, we are putting them to become the norms and standards as per the Act. So once they are gazetted, they become the rules that they must be adhered to. So we want to do this as a long term plan for us to work. We have had incidences of one or two people that we got reports that they are not compliant. We've raised it with the organization. We continuously work. Uh, the sector has said to us they can self-monitor, they can self-regulate, and we said to them, look, we have to work together to ensure that we, we do not become the center of the distribution or the center where, as a, as a sector, we become the, in, so the, spreader of, the spreaders of the virus. Now, part of what we'll do as a department, we do have our safety monitors that will be actually moving across assisting us to monitor compliance. Myself, for example, this weekend, I will be going out, visiting attractions across uh, to be able to do spot checks if they are complying and they are not complying. Most of the places I've been, Chris Elder, they have not even known that it's me because the mask, sometimes they help. So you put the mask, you walk in, you sit in a restaurant, you enjoy, then you are able to observe if they are doing what you have said you are doing. We do know that even from the net joint um, teams, they've gone out and we've received a report to say in these areas they are non-compliance. We did get, for example, there's a time where I got a report that says in the Western Cape, there were people who were selling alcohol in restaurants. We raised it with the restaurant association and other associations to say, this is unacceptable, can we stop? So we'll continue to do that. And we are appealing again, Chris Alder, to our sector to comply. I mean, somebody was asking me during the day to say, if they don't comply to give you what happens, they will meet Minister Peggy Tzene. I am not Minister of Police or in the justice system. So I'm Minister of Tourism. My work is to make sure that I communicate to them what needs to do. When they break the law, they face those that break the law. They will be arrested. Minister, I'm afraid that's all we have time for this evening. Thanks very much uh, indeed. Uh, Tourism awesome Minister Mamuloko Kubai Ngubane, as uh, the sector uh, tries to pick up uh, from the losses uh, due to the impact of uh, the COVID-19 impact of uh, the COVID-19 virus. Let's take a short break uh, here on uh, The Full View. Uh, we'll be back very shortly.